So for this program, we're going to use the grid and move a sprite along the grid to another sprite. So first we're going to add the grid. So on the top, you will see the option to add the grid. And then you can see the two axes, um, the X and the Y. We're going to change it to a smaller sprite because right now you can see the center of the scratch has a little square indicating where a scratch is located. It's a little easier for students when you have a smaller sprite. So you can click on the plus sign and choose any sprite that seems small. You might have to try a couple different ones until you get the right one. So I'm going to choose the basketball and I'm going to get rid of this cat sprite so just hold down your mouse on it and then click or your finger if you're on the iPad I'm going to bring move my basketball down to 1-1 one, one. so at first you can just let students play around and get used to the grid so they'll realize when they move to the right the x-axis moves over so it's at 14 while the y is at 2 and it's up to you if you want to actually talk about the axis or just talk about moving over to the right and up a certain amount. It's always important to make sure you say the X first, so the horizontal and then the Y, the vertical axis second, to prepare them when they get into Cartesian plane. So I'm going to add a second sprite. And I'm going to use a basketball. So I'm going to move my basketball, or my sorry, a soccer ball rather, I'm going to move my basketball back to 1-1 one, one, and I'm going to code it now. So make sure on the left hand side that you're actually selecting the sprite that you want to code. You can't just select it on the on the stage. So let's click on the basketball and we're going to make our basketball move over all the way to the soccer ball. We're just going to double check. So the soccer ball is at 11-8 and the basketball is currently at 1-1. One, one. So your students can do two things. They could count to figure out how many steps they need to move to the right, or they might do subtraction, so 11 minus one. I'm gonna click back on the basketball, and I click when the green flag is clicked in the yellow blocks. Then I'm going to use the arrow blocks, the blue ones, and we're going to move over 10 steps. And then we're going to go up seven steps, looks like. So we'll change that to seven. Oops. And then we're going to click on the basketball, or the soccer ball rather. And when the basketball touches the soccer ball, I would like it to grow and then pop. So you can click on the orange, actually, sorry, click on the yellow blocks and grab the when it bumps the soccer ball. It looks like the two characters are touching. Then we can go to the purple blocks and we can make it grow. So it looks like the little guy is getting bigger and bigger. And I'm going to make it grow 30. And then I'm going to make it pop. So under the green block, so you can grab the pop. And what's really cool about this, I'll we'll show you later, you can actually record their voices and add sound effects with their voice, which has huge possibilities there. Okay, so then I'm going to make it disappear. So go back to the purple blocks and you can see there's an outline of a guy. And we can click on that to make it disappear. So. Let's go back to the basketball code so we can watch it move and hit that so we know how far it's going to the right and how far it's going up. Then hit the green flag to run your program. And if you have your sound out on, you will see that the basketball or the soccer ball gets big and then pops.